would just say that only the Green Party would have a nomination meeting on Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> which we turned out to have a fantastic crowd out. Even though it did, uh, a few Twitter jokes got shown my way from a few folks like, you're doing politics on Super Bowl Sunday? Like, are you crazy? And I said, no, I'm in the Green Party. This is the way we do things. We didn't even know it was Super Bowl Sunday. We didn't Sunday. even know it was Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? What is Super Bowl Sunday? Anyway. So true. So, the so not only do we do that, well, the concern, who calls an election on Super Bowl Sunday is what I want to know. <laughs> so I, I think Harper should have to answer to that. Who calls an election and gets the date wrong when they do it. So I want to know the answer to that one. But then I was thinking, so who calls their campaign launch on the one day we actually have winter in Toronto this year? Like, we were supposed to do this when we thought climate change was, like, the imminent problem two days ago when it was, like, 12 degrees, and I was telling, and I was, I was doing this field trip with my daughter's school, and we all went, we were going to go snow skiing, and it was literally 12 degrees. And I looked at their teacher, and I said, before we start skiing, can we have a conversation about climate change here? Yeah. And they were like, go for it, Mike. You're the perfect person to have this conversation about this. And it's so true, eh? So I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. You know, this is going to be uh, an amazing by-election. Partly we have an amazing candidate, we have an amazing team. Our candidate has an amazing campaign manager you're going to meet in a little bit if you haven't met her already. And you know what? We're a principled party that has the courage and convictions to stand up and tackle the long-term tough issues that the other political parties are unwilling to tackle. And that's what's so exciting. Come on in. I clap for And that's what's so exciting about being a part of this team. So I'm gonna bring Adriana up here, our candidate, and say thank you for stepping up to the plate and representing our vision and our views. And let's fire this crowd up tonight. Our children deserve better. Our children deserve to have hockey and today's a good day because it means that we still have a chance to save hockey for our kids. Um, our children deserve to have a climate that isn't totally destroyed, a planet that isn't totally polluted. Our children deserve to have, uh, to not be thrown in jail and criminalized because they smoke pot. That's something our, our party stands for too. Our party stands for uh, uh, building an energy system that's powered essentially by the sun, that's clean. Our party stands for clean water and fresh air, and our kids need all of that. And today, uh, a lot of what we're here for is because we finally opened our office and we're ready to kick the campaign into high gear, and just yesterday, our campaign manager, new campaign manager, arrived all the way from Prince Edward Island, and I want you to meet her, she's wonderful. Sharon, come on up. campaign's going to be all about. <laughs> and how we're going to proceed. Thank you. Thanks. Well, I'm so happy to be in Toronto, and this is not winter like, believe me. <laughs> 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 I'm staying with my daughter, and she got up before me this morning, and I said, is there much snow? And she said, oh, yeah. And so when I get up and I looked, and I see like this, <laughs> you've lost your perspective on winter. <laughs> we have. Yeah, totally. <laughs> You know, I'm thrilled to be down south for the winter, at least for the next five or six weeks. <laughs> a nice break from the real winter. And I'm so um, excited to be here because I was very pleasantly surprised when I got here and started examining the 2011 campaign to find out what a really sophisticated campaign had been run here in the past. As far as green campaigns go, this was one of the more sophisticated campaigns. They had all the elements of a good campaign. They knew what they were doing. They, they rolled the stuff out. And so there's an awful lot to work on here this time. There's a big base of identified voters, and Adrienne is the queen of door knocking. <laughs> and uh, I'm really excited for this campaign because I think, especially it being a by-election, no pressure on the voters to strategically vote, I think it's going to be a very good campaign. 
And uh, I'm hoping that everybody here will come out and volunteer. I know most of you are probably already volunteering. And bring your family and your friends out. And, and our goal here is to do the very best we can. And I think we can do very well here in this by-election. I'm not going to make any predictions as to how well we'll do because it's early days. But I think we can do very well. We have a brilliant candidate. The, the groundwork from the last campaign has already been set. And there's so much already in place that it's really a joy to come here and, and work with what's already in place and, and, and get another campaign on the road. And uh, I'm just thrilled to be here and I hope that all of you get out and, and volunteer, knock on doors. Our campaign is, is going to rely heavily on door knocking and phone canvassing and then getting that vote out. That's what the NDP does so brilliantly to win their writings and that's what our party is learning to do as well. And we can do it. They've made a brilliant start here in 2011 to that. And um, if you can all come out and knock on doors, make some phone calls and bring your family and friends with you, we'll do really well here. Thanks. Hey, Frankie, are we still waiting on speakers? Mm -hmm. For your, for your, the speakers aren't here. Okay. Yeah, the speakers aren't here. Yeah. Do you want to do your thing, or we can adjust? I think that we should adjust. We're right, going to we adjust. Need the speakers. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to have some amazing entertainment in a second, <laughs> or in a few minutes. But as most of you know, political campaigns require three things, really: a brilliant message and messenger, which we have. An amazing team of volunteers who are willing to put their time and effort into knocking on doors and attending events and putting up signs and doing all the wonderful things that volunteers do. And I can see by everyone who's here tonight and who was here for the nomination meeting, uh, what, a week or so ago, that we have an amazing team of people. So there's the third element. Three, I always say there's three M's. The third one is money. And we tonight are lucky to have not only the former leader of the Green Party of Canada here with us, but also probably one of the Green Party's master fundraisers in Jim Harris. So I want Jim to come up and get this campaign kicked off on the right foot so we have the resources we need to, you know, buy signs, pay for literature, and as Adrienne always likes to say, make sure that our volunteers are well fed. <laughs> So uh, I don't know if uh, you saw it, uh, but uh, the national uh, NOAA in the States just released the data showing that January was the fourth warmest January in 118 years. It was 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the average for the 20th century. And while some people might say, well, geez, I don't like cold winters, uh, and I've heard people in Canada say that. What they don't realize is the consequences of that warming climate. And uh, cold snaps have a very important role in the ecological order of things. And it's cold snaps that kill the larvae of the Bruce budworm. And when there aren't as many or there are no cold snaps, we end up with explosive populations of budworm which have killed millions of acres of timber worth billions of dollars. And so even though it's not as cold, uh, it has a huge ecological consequence. And there is a reason that southern nations have far more diseases than northern climates. It's because our northern climate kills off the bugs in the winter. And so we don't have Lyme's disease carried by ticks but it's becoming more prevalent as it gets warmer in southern Ontario. So this shifting climate, it has very serious repercussions. And we need candidates who will stand up and speak the truth. Because we need truth telling in this era of Karl Rove and George W. Bush campaign strategies mm -hmm. where you just lie and lie and lie until enough people believe it. And so I'm proud to be here tonight supporting Adriana because she's a candidate who I have seen who time and time again stands up and tells the truth. And it's very important in this riding in particular. This is a riding that was a riding of a former leader 
uh, two former leaders actually. I ran here in 2004 and um, Jack and the NDP were very upset that I ran here. And so once he was elected in 06, I moved over to the beaches where Marin, Marilyn Shirley was very upset that I was running there. <laughs> so, but this is a really important riding and it's a riding that has been willing to bet on shifts because, uh, you know, Dennis Mills held this riding for years until Jack ran here. And so this is a great riding. And I've seen some of the campaign themes that Adrian is suggesting and they're really quite exciting. Uh, because Jack was really progressive when he was a city councillor. But once he got uh, to be leader of the NDP, all sorts of progressive things fell away. He even fired his chief of staff, who was Rick Smith, because Rick was against seal slaughter in uh, Newfoundland. And they wanted the seven ridings from Newfoundland more than they wanted the principle of protecting uh, helpless seal pups. And so Rick, Rick Smith was sacrificed as a chief of staff on the principle of uh, political expediency. And we saw this time and time again uh, on the Afghanistan question. The whole thing could have been ended by now, but the NDP chose to vote against that motion uh, rather than work in harmony with the Liberals because it would be seen as uh, it was more politically expedient. Or think about this one. When Martin was still Prime Minister and a teetering minority, Jack could have extracted proportional representation, something the NDP has yammered on about but never done anything about at that critical, but he preferred to have Harper in power <laughs> rather than to have the Liberals because the Liberals are closer to the NDP and therefore more of a threat. So we'd rather go backwards on NAFTA, we'd rather go backwards on environmental things, we'd rather go backwards on daycare, we'd rather go backwards on Afghanistan, we'd rather go backwards on all of these things that actually make progress because just winning a few more seats is more exciting than actually creating real change. And so I'm excited to be with a principled party. Um, uh, I would like to recognize one individual. I have campaigned with her all across Canada. Um, I have uh, campaigned in PEI for democratic reform. Want to grab one? Um, she is a tire. This woman. In uh, the House, in uh, the House of Parliament in uh, in PEI in Charlottetown, uh, at the throne speech, she just inserted herself onto the floor where the uh, MLAs are, and they uh, they evicted her where she complained, and she forced her way back onto that floor, and she sat there as the leader of the Green Party of Prince Edward Island as the throne speech was read. She's been a tireless campaigner. There's a very famous photograph of her uh, protesting the pesticides that are sprayed on potatoes in PEI. That, uh, that was it in Time magazine? Um, I don't think it was in Time. They put it in the Globe and Mail a little while ago after many years of it not being public. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you'll, if you ever see this photo, you'll know, you will not forget it. So Sharon, will you please come up and get one of these scarves? I gotta get the door. <laughs> so why why did you come all the way up here? Um, I'm a campaign junkie. <laughs> Groupie junkie. I don't know, got the bug so many years ago. And London North Center, the campaign Jim was talking about Elizabeth's first by election or first election campaign. It was so amazing. It was so much fun. It was brilliant. We all of us who worked there, there was ten of us, we all resolved at that time that we just wanted to be a team and travel the country wherever there were elections, <laughs> local elections, and some of us are still doing it. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of fun. We had we, we rented a house and my dream was to have Animal House, you know, from my from my university days. And it was we, we, it was. It'd be like thirty on weekends or thirty and forty people uh, you know crashed out on the crashed floor. out and uh, there were some love affairs that started oh as a result God, of that house. And, and, that oh it was we had a king of beer there and <laughs> it was <laughs> Oh it was great. <laughs> but I love all that. I have 
to say, those <laughs> things went on in the house. None of us saw the light of day except on, on the, the drive from that house to that camp campaign office. I was there the whole camp. I never saw anything of London. One day I went to the grocery store at lunch to get something, and it was the first time I'd actually been out for a walk and looked around, and it was just like another world out there. But it was pretty intense in a campaign, but it's so much fun. So, you guys, I'm, I think you're all volunteering already, anyway, most of you, in some capacity, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and if you've never been involved in a campaign, do come out. Like we had people in LNC, we had people bringing food in. They couldn't work on the campaign, but they'd make their favorite stew and bring it in, and there was food in the campaign office. We didn't crack the beers until late at night. <laughs> um, but we just had a lot of fun. And uh, well, Constantine it, was there too. Oh yeah, he was one of the weekend yeah. warriors. <laughs> Look at him back there smirking. <laughs> So Karen, uh, uh, Sharon will bring uh, Sharon will bring that spirit to this campaign as well. Campaign works because of all of you, mm -hmm. um, and yeah. and without you, nothing of this would have happened. Okay. Charlie and I were talking about how in this campaign, no. this this office just sort of happened by magic because people came in and did it, and they just sort of thought this needs doing, this needs doing, this needs doing, and they did it. <laughs> and I really appreciate it. So if I get to Parliament, it'll be because of your hard work. I will owe you. And I will work very hard for you. I will work even harder for you in Parliament than I am now. Thank you so much.